Okay, so last time we talked about uh, land switching, just basic land switching. Oh, and there's something I actually forgot to mention about uh, land switching, is that there are two, uh, or actually three, if <laughs> if you're using Cisco switches, there are three different types. There is store and forward, in which uh, when when a switch receives a frame, okay, it stores it in its memory checks it for errors and then forwards it out to the appropriate port okay and then there's cut through which is basically it just once it starts receiving the bytes it's sending them out to the appropriate port okay and then there's the first 64 all right and that's whenever it receives and checks the first 64 bytes cuz usually that's where errors occur or bits excuse me first 64 bits that's where the errors normally occur okay once it receives that then it starts it starts shooting it out to the correct port okay and that actually is the the one that you want well there are you can use different types in different ways and actually you know what since we're talking about broadcast storms I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, LAN uh, architecture okay so, in in a LAN, especially a large LAN, not so much a small one, but you have you have three layers. Okay, so let's put the let's put the first. I'm not very good at drawing straight lines, but first layer there, second layer there, third layer there. Okay. So you've got your PCs down here. Okay, these are your end users, is what we call them, right? So, you've got your end users. Now, these guys are, okay, there's no cables connected to these guys, so how are they going to do anything? Okay, uh, you know what, let's put a, let's see, access, distribution, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I can't decide where I want to put this, yeah, yeah we're going to, Mm, yeah, we're gonna put it right here. This is okay. This is gonna be your servers. All right, your let's say this is some corporation. All right, they're gonna have some servers to provide uh, different services for these guys. Uh, there's another layer I need to add, but I'll do that in a minute. Uh, <clears throat> so these gu these guys need to get their email from. The, but there's no way for them to get that right now, right? Okay, so we're gonna add uh, we're gonna add a couple of switches to connect these guys. All right. Okay. Well, that's cool. Let's uh, let's put some cables in. All right. We're just starting out as a company, so we're gonna put these cables in. All right. This is this is good, right? Okay. So now, okay. Well, we need to, these guys to at least be able to share information so we're gonna we're gonna connect these switches together alright now here's an interesting thing okay these guys can all talk to each other okay they're good but if this if somebody you know unplugs this cable or something then communication is going to be entirely disrupted okay so what we do is we add another one going over here okay so we have so if somebody breaks this cable this guy can still talk all these guys can still talk okay somebody break this one they're still good somebody breaks this one they're still good okay so this is called redundancy okay but the only problem with this is whenever you do whenever you have a flood okay if there's no protection flood protection we talked about floods in the last video, right? Okay, so if there's no flood protection, this guy sends a frame over here, and this guy was like, oh, I don't know where that's at, so I'm going to flood it out of all ports. So it goes this way, and it goes this way. Okay? It goes this way, this way, and this way. It doesn't come go out the port that it came in. Okay, so, you know, it, this frame's going this way. This guy says, oh, I don't know where it's at either. So he sends it this way, this way, and this way. Okay, and this frame is still traveling along this line over here okay so this guy gets it he's like well I don't know either so I'm gonna send it this way this way and this way okay and then 
it travels along here. Now this guy receives both, and he's like, well, I don't know. So let's say he receives this one first, all right? And this is, this is not a half duplex. Let's say that it's not half duplex, all right? We're gonna we're gonna use full duplex on on this, all right? To especially these lines, these trunk lines. We'll talk about trunking in a little bit, but these lines here, he's gonna use full duplex so that you get the maximum amount of bandwidth out of this. Okay, so he receives this frame in here. Okay, oh well, I don't know where it's at, so I'm gonna send it here, here, and back out over here. Okay, and let's say that this guy is nowhere on this network. He's, I don't know, over here somewhere. No, they're not connected to him, so they're never going to find him. So, so this guy sends, you know, that frame back out here, and whenever re he receives this one, he sends it out of here. So now you've got this, these frames going back and forth, back and forth, and they're multiplying and multiplying and multiplying, and basically it's going to run the processor down. You're not going to get very much processing power out of these switches after a while. Okay, so basically your network is going to be rendered useless. Okay, and that's what a broadcast storm is. Is whenever you have so many broadcasts that are just looping and looping and looping and looping that your network is rendered useless. Okay, so now let's go up to the next layer. Alright, they, they still can't communicate with this. That, but yeah, that was broadcast storms. Alright, so they can't communicate with this. This is architecture. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a little bit better switches, right? A little bit more heavy duty switches. Okay? And I'll tell you how to fix this here in a minute. How to fix this broadcast storm. Uh, so, we're going to take these guys and connect them to here. To these switches. Okay? And once again, if you don't have broadcast, you know, if you don't have broadcasting protection, Again, this will render your entire network useless. Possibly even damage these these pieces of equipment if left unchecked. Okay. But now what if one of these lines breaks? Okay, yeah, we've got these down here, but you know what? We're gonna take these this one out. Okay, because we've got these here. Okay, well what if one of these lines breaks? They can't they can't communicate, right? So we're gonna connect one right actually we're gonna connect two. And we'll talk about why. Actually, I'll go ahead and tell you why. Because what you do, and actually this looks like this. Or no, like this. Sorry. It looks like this. Alright, and this is what's known as a um, oops. <clears throat> as an ether channel. Okay, I don't, I don't know if that's the industry name for it but I, I'm used to Cisco so this is this is called an ether channel okay and basically what it does let's say you have a hundred megabits on each one of these lines okay full duplex it basically combines the two into one bandwidth okay so you have 200 megabits full duplex with these as in an ether channel and I don't even know if I can tell you about ether channels or how to use them, but well, I can tell you how to use them, but <clears throat> I, I'm not going to teach you because I'm not an authorized Cisco instructor. Um, but yeah, you have you know an ether channel, so you've got 200 megabits full duplex here. All right, now this is this is okay. This is called your access layer, and I'm pretty sure this is industry standard. This is called your distri distribution. I'm not good at spelling. All right, now you need something else. Okay, actually, you're going to have a few more in here, but uh, nah, not for this network. This is enough. Okay, and then you're going to have one more really, really, really powerful switch up here. Okay, this guy is like the mother of all switches alright he's got fiber optic channels here and here alright he's just a bad mamma jammy alright so this guy can process faster than all of these put together so this is called your well, I'm gonna write it over here 
core layer. All right, D access, distribution, and core. Okay, and this is where. Let me think about that. Actually, you're probably better off connecting it here, not farther. Oh well. Uh, let's just say you put your server farm here. All right, that's actually not a bad idea. It might be a better idea to put it here. Uh, just closer. Uh, you can put it there, as long as you have fiber optic channels here. Yeah, we got fiber optics. Okay, once again, fiber optic ether channels. So we've got massive amounts of bandwidth and speed right here. So we're going to do the same thing from, and a lot of servers have these uh, these ether channel uh, available cards you can use with these switches. All right, so this is also an ether channel, it's fiber. So this is really, really fast, all right? So these guys can just, bam, get information. And all of these guys can access this at the same time because of this, all right? And this is the fastest way of, you know, of networking your your lands. Okay, but broadcast storms, all right? So that's that's network architecture a little bit. I mean, there's more to it than that. You, there's a lot of calculations and stuff that go into this, uh, especially with the amount of how many you're supposed to use. But I, I can't tell you that. That's all. You're going to have to take a Cisco course to learn that. And by the way, Cisco is like the number one <laughs> networking god. Okay, they have guys that just can teach you anything. Man, but they're they're a little expensive, but you know, whatever. Okay, so uh broadcast storm. So right, you've got these two let's just take these two switches over here. Let's mess them up and oops, we uh put these in. Okay. Oh, okay. We got redundancy, but oh, we've got a broadcast. Uh, this guy's over here. He's trying to get to something that's not there. Oh no, we got a broadcast storm. Okay. So what do we do? What do, what, what technologies are we able to use to fix this? Well, we've got <laughs> the one thing that uh, you might look up the spanning tree poem, but yeah, it's spanning tree protocol STP the best thing in land switching aside from ether channel I think or gigabit ethernet that's pretty awesome but <clears throat> anyway spanning tree protocol okay so what does this do well, spanning tree I've never heard of that okay so you've got I'm not I'm not gonna go into the specifics of it because it's it gets fairly complicated well I might in a later video but not in this one uh, it's basically uh, spanning tree uh, you'll have two switches right they're connected like this okay well one of them is is going to elect itself the master switch okay it's basically whenever you if you turn one on first and you turn the other one on second this this guy is going to run the STP protocol and elect himself the master switch okay and then this guy's gonna go well you you know you were turned on first and there there are other ways uh, you can set one as the master uh, you can do it by it does it by MAC address who has the highest MAC address um, you know there are other other things that you can do to set one as the master okay and so let's just say this guy is the master alright well he's gonna pick no, he's not gonna pick. Well, he is gonna pick. He's gonna pick the the port with the uh, is it highest or lowest? I think it's lowest MAC address. That and he's gonna shut that port off. Okay, because he's got two. Okay. Well, first, what he's gonna do? He's gonna ask this guy. He's gonna send a STP frame out. Okay, and then it's gonna come back to him. Okay. Well, he's marked it with with his own special STP marking. Okay. So it's going to send it out, and it's going to get transmitted back o over to here because they send it out to all all ports whenever STP is running. Okay, and then he's going to get it back, and he's going to be like, "Oh, well, I have to shut off one of these ports, so I'm going to shut off this one." It has a 
pretty sure it's the highest MAC address, but it has this one. It has the highest MAC address. So I'm going to shut it off. And somebody please just leave a comment if that's incorrect, because I really don't remember. It's been a minute. Uh, but basically, it's going to shut a port off. Okay. And one is still going to be active. Okay. This is going to be in a basically in a suspended state. It's not off, but it's in a suspended state where it doesn't send or receive traffic. Well, it does, but it just ignores it. <clears throat> so then that's going to stop all this broadcast storm. All right. That's going to stop that because there's only one way for the traffic to go now. Okay. And so basically this if this line goes bad or gets cut, he's going to reactivate that port. Okay? And it's going to come back up. Okay? And then let's say you just bring this one right back in. Let's let's fix it. Okay? Well, then he's going to shut that one off again. All right, because it's the same port. All right, it's got the same properties. All this has the same properties as it, as it did before. Okay, but uh, well, you can actually set it so that one of these will be shut off. And you can pick which one you want. But uh, that's that's how you fix a broadcasting storm. Spanning tree protocol. And look up the poem for that. It's it's actually pretty funny. It was created by. A, this protocol was created by a woman, so that's, you know, that's something. All right, see you in the next video, and I'm going to talk about, oh, probably some more land stuff.